YouTube ads. Why do you think YouTube ads are important mix in the entrepreneurial world if you really want to scale? Well, I, I, so I think the YouTube ads, um, the significance behind YouTube ads is more about diversification than it is anything else, right? So like when I'm uh, investing in a business, when I'm in advising a business, one of the most important things that we always do is to be able to ensure that we diversify. So we want to diversify income streams. We want to diversify traffic sources. Um, you know, if I go and I want to buy a business, for example, in my investing side of what I do, and I see that the business has any more than 30 or 40% of its sales on a single source, it automatically becomes risky to me. Now, let's just think about this from an entrepreneur's perspective. A lot of entrepreneurs, they, 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 in order to scale from, say, you know, getting from 10,000 or 30,000 a month to 100,000 a month, generally you will see an entrepreneur utilize a single traffic source, master that traffic source, and then utilize that to be able to scale. At a certain point, that traffic source, everything changes, right? So every every 18 to 36 months, everything changes. So what worked 18 months ago, generally it's not going to work now. What works now isn't going to work 18 to 36 months from now. That's generally how the cycle goes. And so you want to be able to diversify where your customers are coming from for a bunch of reasons. One, in which the fact that it creates a more stabilized business. Two, in which the fact that it allows you to make it so that if another traffic source goes away, you could just increase the traffic source course here. Number three, you don't know what you don't know. You know, a lot of the times when I see people utilizing YouTube ads, they get way better return on ad spend over on YouTube because of the way that the platform works versus on, you know, Facebook or Instagram or these other platforms. So I think uh, YouTube signifies uh, even less about the fact that, hey, you, you know, number one, YouTube's an amazing platform to be able to use for YouTube ads. But number two, it allows you to diversify, which at the beginning, when you diversify, you will actually have slower growth. But if you look three, six, 12 months down the road, those entrepreneurs that diversify on traffic sources and on its marketing is going to have a much higher upswing later down the road. So it's an investment into your business that allows you to have a much more solid business, a much easier time scaling, and it also protects you inside of uh, your ability to actually scale. I agree with you 100%, but do you remember when I came to you, I think with my, um, I approached you because I wanted to scale my business. I'm a YouTube ads expert in the German speaking yep. market. And, yep. you, and your reaction surprised me very much because you said, wow, you're doing YouTube ads. Like I'm getting approached twice a week, people asking for YouTube ads and no one really knows how to do it. Why do you think that, YouTube ads is still this part many people don't know about. So I think I think for a lot of people, they, there's a lot of ways I can answer that question. So I'll give you the top ones. I think the first is that people just don't get around to it. Uh, I think that's a big one. And so when something, the, the problem with human beings is that once something works, we get lazy. All right. So, so if, if, if I come to you and I'm saying, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm spending a hundred thousand dollars on Facebook ads and I'm making $250,000 back. There's not a whole lot of motivation for me to be able to say, okay, well, let me take some of that budget or, 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 or you know, let me do this other thing. That's that I don't know about. So that's the one. I think the second reason is, and you know, this incredibly well, YouTube is entirely different than Facebook and Instagram. You cannot take your Facebook and Instagram and translate it over on YouTube. Now you can take YouTube and translate it over on Facebook and Instagram, but Absolutely. not the other way, not the other way. So I think that that's the second thing. And it takes a lot of testing. So it's a lot of video time. A lot of entrepreneurs aren't good at video time. A lot of entrepreneurs uh, don't want to get better at that as a skill. Um, they're, they're afraid of it, right? They're a little bit afraid of it. And, and I understand that. I, I empathize with that. Uh, so that's the second thing. Uh, I think the third thing is that YouTube generally won't work at the beginning the same way that Facebook and Instagram will work at the beginning, right? And so, you know, so the amount of money you have to put up front to be able to get the success is generally um, higher. So that's the third. I would say the fourth is that generally speaking, this is not always the case, but generally speaking, Facebook leads are cheaper than YouTube on the front end. Right. So you may have a $10 cost per lead on YouTube, but a $4 cost per lead on Facebook. And um, you're going to look at that and say, OK, well, Facebook's working better. Well, what about lifetime value? How about how fast that person buys? Generally speaking, what we see from YouTube is higher intent, higher cost, 
but the chances of them buying are much higher because of the way that we can actually attract people on YouTube, right? Because if someone's on YouTube, a lot of times they're going to be actively seeking content. They're actively sat down. Their, 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 their ability to pay attention and have intention is much higher. On Facebook, you might be just scrolling on, 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 on the toilet. You might be scrolling 11 o'clock at night. You're not, you're not actually, most of the time, you're not actually actively on Facebook looking for something. You're, 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 you're sort of bored and right? people on Facebook are more bored. Whereas on YouTube, they're more seeking actual content. I've actually, when I, I, I probably watch, you know, 30 minutes of YouTube a day, right? Generally it's when I'm eating, right? So my lunch, I generally eat in between some work. I'll be here and I pull, pull up YouTube. I'm actively, Hey, I want to be entertained right now. I don't want to be in Netflix. I don't want to, I want to be able to be entertained for 11 minutes. And then I want to go away and never think about what I just looked at. That's YouTube, right? That's a large part of YouTube. So, uh, so, so for the, all of those reasons, there's a massive opportunity, but there is this kind of gap to be able to actually make it work uh, based upon all those things. But once you make it work, it's just extremely, extremely scalable. And that's what you're all about. And I don't know if you remember, and I know that you always say it's more about quality than quantity. That's what you are all about. Say, get, I mean, you prefer less people that are more qualified than huge amount of people that might never buy from you. Yeah. And, and YouTube's really great for that. YouTube's very good for high intent leads. YouTube's very good for, um, you know, the, the truth is it's better to have a thousand people in front of, not even a hundred. It's better to have a hundred people in front of you that you're relevant to than 10,000 people that you don't know which 100 you're actually relevant to, right? And so, so it's, it's like, would you rather be in a stadium of 10,000 people where your message isn't even gonna be heard or in front of 100 people? And 100 people is gonna make way more sense, right? You're gonna be able to interact with them. You're gonna have to have more intimacy with them. You're gonna have more relevancy with them. Your ability to be able to actually scale is much better. So, um, and there's a lot more targeted traffic on YouTube than there is on Facebook. And I think that that's, you know, if you look at which one's easier to scale in the long run, YouTube is easier than Facebook and Instagram. So it's kind of like this. The trade-off is YouTube's more difficult to get started at the beginning, and, but it has a lot more scale and it has a lot more potential uh, from a lifetime value perspective. Facebook and Instagram, much easier to get started and much easier initial results. And a lot of the time, a lot... Um, you get a lot more uh, uh, false positives on Facebook, right? Because you're like, oh, it's a dollar lead cost. That's amazing. Well, who is the person? Who is that person? Who are they? Right? Are, are they actually your ideal customer? Because I'd much rather pay $10 a lead or even $20, even $30 a lead for the perfect ideal person versus having 30 people that are, that, that are just going to clog up my email deliverability. I don't know if you remember, but I know that you had a launch last year and um, you don't do many launches anymore, but it was a big launch you were doing and you were like uh, doing advertisement on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram and on YouTube. And the YouTube ads weren't working as well as you like them to. And you asked me to have a look at it. I don't know. Can you remember what we did uh, in the back end of your uh, in your YouTube ads account? I don't know if your uh, traffic person told you. I I have I have no idea. I'm at the point I'm at the point these days where I don't know much of what happens uh, on on a granular level. But I'll tell you this, which is, you know, I I've never. So I mean, you know, the reason why I wanted to work with you and I wanted to get YouTube. So so, and this is not answering the question. <laughs> But it's going to answer. But it's going to answer a different question. Okay. And and so and so the, so the answer to that question is I have no idea. Um, and but but the answer to the overall part is as you've said before, I have people every single day at this point every single day ask me, how do I get on YouTube? Right? How how do I get ads on YouTube going? Right? And, and of course, YouTube organic versus YouTube ads, two totally different things. Absolutely. And I've never had a solution for it, right? You know, generally the solution is, okay, well, you're going to hire an agency. Um, I'm not a big fan of hiring agencies. You know, I, I, in, in every business I own, I own 56 businesses as of this recording. Not a single one of them hires an agency. None of them, right? None of them. Now, that doesn't mean I'm anti-agency. Um, 
I just don't like working with agencies. The reason why I don't like working with agencies is I hate outsourcing my marketing and sales, right? As an entrepreneur, if you outsource your marketing and sales, if you outsource that, if you don't understand how to do it yourself, you're outsourcing your ability to make money. That to me is really, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now there is a time and place for an agency, but most of the time people hire agencies way too early because they don't trust themselves with being able to actually do their marketing and sales, even though they're the best person to be able to do it. So most of the time, YouTube ads are done by agencies uh, or they're not done at all. And a lot of the time, the upstart cost being saying, okay, well, I'm going to pay an agency $10,000 a month because most good agencies are going to cost $10,000 a month to have a good YouTube agency. Well, then I get going to go and spend a bunch of time and a bunch of money. And I'm not even going to understand how YouTube works for me. That's why I wanted to say, hey, let's, let's make it so that entrepreneurs understand how to do this themselves. Like a lot of them understand how to do it with their own Facebook or Instagram ads, or let's take the person that's currently doing your Facebook and Instagram and let's bring YouTube into their skill set so that they can help on both sides. And I think that that's really valuable because the, the, there, there aren't that many great solutions for YouTube ads, which in many ways is why I've never, you know, nailed YouTube uh, advertising um, to the degree in which I would uh, want to nail it. Uh, and for the same reasons that I told or, or about you earlier, one of the reasons why I haven't really na nailed YouTube advertising is you kind of need someone to hold your hand and be like, hey, this is what this is what you need to be testing. Or th these are, you know, here's the, here's, you know, 10 different angles or here's 20 different angles or, the, you know, these different types of things. Um, um, and, and because so differently than Facebook and Instagram from every way, from targeting to the intent to uh, creative. Um, if you don't have someone helping you up that mountain, you're probably not going to actually get up that mountain. On Facebook and Instagram, I'll tell you, like you can get up the mountain by yourself. YouTube, I actually think it's a far diffi more difficult mountain to actually climb by yourself. But just in the beginning, and I think that's the important part people yeah. don't get. Because yep. once you find the winners. I mean, I'm having ads right now that have been running for one and a half year in the German speaking market. Yep. And they have yep. been running for this long period of time and making me money every day without yep. me launching all the time. So what I have to do every day, I'm 10 minutes in my Google ads account, keep optimizing and getting better and better and better every day just by 1%. But if you're doing this yep. every day, that's, I mean, that's what you're all about. I mean, if you look and you, at your system, you are combining evergreen launching systems with like life launching systems. And that's really builds a business that is sustainable. I mean, you, you kind of got to do that because if you do evergreen only, you don't get the profitability of when you use launches. And if you use only launches, you don't get any sustainability. Right. So, so, so overlaying that's really good. And then of course, you know, if you're, if you're using these, you know, and this is not just YouTube, this is every paid platform, you know, if you're using it on evergreen, like the, there's so many disadvantages on only using, only doing ads for launches. Right. Uh, and the disadvantages is obviously they don't, people don't know you that, that, that for that long, you know, people haven't seen you, the trust factor isn't there, but if you have evergreen, you can retarget your YouTube views a lot better. Your, your, your ability to retarget and use omnipresence is just so much better. Um, and that, and I mean, I think that, that, that also skirtails into another thing, which is YouTube has a much easier time being able to build intimacy than on Facebook and Instagram. Um, right. Because like someone's willing to watch, if you have a good ad, someone's literally willing to watch you teach them. Right. Uh, and, and, and on Facebook, you know, your view time on Facebook is minute, right. Versus if you look at the view time on YouTube, it's much, 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 much longer. Because again, as I said, Someone sat down or, or somebody somebody has the intention of I'm okay watching video right now, right? When I'm on, if I'm on Facebook and I don't spend very much time on Facebook, I might spend five minutes a day on Facebook. I don't spend much time at all. But when I'm on there, it's kind of like, I don't actually want to be here. Right? I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't sit down and be like, I'm going to browse Facebook right now. And I don't think most people do that. On YouTube, someone generally isn't just trying to get a dopamine fix on YouTube. 
They're sitting down saying, I'm okay being entertained right now, or I'm okay learning right now. I'm being educated. I'm being entertained on Facebook. And, and it's not just Facebook. This is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, more of the dopamine rich kind of social apps. Uh, they, they're, they're generally, they're, you're on those apps to kind of escape the current reality or deal with stress. Th those are the main reasons you're on those social platforms. On YouTube, that's a li it's a little bit different. You're not trying to you're not trying to escape your reality as much on YouTube. You're 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 it's a different level of entertainment. Plus, because you're all about omnipresence, if you just look at the data Google and YouTube has, I mean, if someone watches a YouTube ad, you can keep retargeting them on YouTube, on Google Display, yeah. on Gmail. Everywhere. Of course, this Everywhere. is all on the same platform and you don't yeah. have the issues you are having uh, post, mm -hmm. uh, post the tracking issues Facebook is having because it's all yeah. on the Google platform. And I don't I, think people understand. I don't think people understand how much ROI is possible from that. Yeah. If I'm honest, I don't think people realize how much ROI there is being able to be on Google AdWords because you were on, you know, uh, the, the YouTube. I don't think people realize how effective, you know, like let's say somebody comes in. I mean, we ran this for a while and and my personal brand, I'm, I'm, I'm spending a lot less money on, on any type of advertising because I'm spending majority of my money on the businesses that I'm, I, I, I own behind the scenes. But in those businesses, you know, one of the best things that I think somebody can do that is cool about YouTube um, well, there's two things. There's two really cool things, which is, you know, based upon how much somebody actually watches a video, now we can show them the next video and that, you know, and so on. Um, but the other cool thing is if you just take 30 of your best videos and you're just showing them to people that are kind of that warm audience and we're doing omnipresence, you're doing omnipresence, but you're kind of doing a better version of omnipresence simply because someone's actually spending the time with you. Right. So on Facebook, they may spend 15 seconds with you. So there's like an imprint in their mind. Oh, Scuttleford. Oh, Scuttleford. But if someone's watched a four minute video of you and you, you actually taught them something, that is entirely different. The imprint is that much stronger. Yes. And what I call this effect is like I call it we built a Netflix for your business, for your customers. It's like yeah. binge yeah. watching your videos and we can build this with apps. And this is well, and and and, and you, you know, and yeah, and not to cut you off, like I remember, you know, someone recently, they're a one-on-one -on -one client of mine, and they paid me half a million dollars. They came across. Here's how what what happened. They came across me. Uh, they told me what happened. They came across me on Instagram. Right. They saw me, me on Instagram, um, and of course, you know, I'm cro I'm very much I'm agnostic. I believe everything. I mean, obviously, why we're here is because I believe people are missing out on YouTube. So we'll get to it. So they went on Instagram. They they got retargeted to my website. They went to my website, and then they ended up on uh, YouTube. They watched some videos, but at the time, I think the, the the main thing I have set up on my own YouTube at the current moment is omnipresence. So if if you're in my targeting pixel, I'm just giving you high value. You know, they're, they're not like super um, lead generated ads. They're just more omnipresence oriented ads. So, you know, videos that are three to 20 minutes long that just come up uh, and that are, you know, uh, 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 sponsored, promoted. And uh, and he's like, you just for for every time you went on YouTube, you were just there. And then I ended up going to your YouTube channel and binge watching probably five hours of your videos. So. And within a week, he, he went from not knowing me to spend a half a million dollars with me. And that was because of the fact that the binge watching reduced the amount of time that he needed to know me. And the being in front of him reduced the amount of time that I needed for him to go from, who's this, who's this guy, to I trust this guy enough to send him enough money to buy a house. That's the power of it. Yes, absolutely. So... um. What would you say to entrepreneurs who want to start with YouTube ads? What's the first step they should do? Well, they need to hire you first. <laughs> um, they, well, no, I mean, I think I think this is one of these things where uh, if you don't understand how it works, both from a technical perspective as well as a strategic perspective, you will absolutely waste a lot of money. 
Uh, and a lot of the times like I tell people I, I'm, a lot of things in life, I tell people just go and figure it out, you know, go, go waste some money and figure it out. And, and, you know, one of my clients, um, Jason, you know, he was having, you know, I told him, Hey, I need you to diversify from, from Facebook because y y you're, you're relying on Facebook. You've scaled up incredibly well. And, um, and I said, listen, just, just go and try to figure it out. And I think you're capable enough to figure it out. Now he was capable enough to figure it out. But he's like, man, he's like, I just feel like I'm, I'm just feel like I'm, I'm spinning my wheels. Uh, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it another month, but after that, I think I'm just going to quit this and go back to Facebook, which is generally what most people do. So I sent Jason over your way and, uh, and he came back to me. I wasn't that long, probably six weeks later. And he's like, oh man, we're crushing it over there. We're getting better re return on ad spend over there than we were on Facebook. Uh, and this was pretty much the same time that we, you know, of course, uh, I, I wanted to be able to bring this uh, into uh, English speaking, and I wanted to be able to have a solution for entrepreneurs to be able to, to actually utilize YouTube. And so I would tell you that if you're going to spend, you know, if you're going to spend your ten or twenty or thirty thousand dollars to try, try to diversify your ad spend, you need to spend some of that money making sure that you're actually playing that game right. Because if not, you're going to spend the entire budget. Uh, and you could have made money back to actually pay for the YouTube advertising itself instead of saying, well, maybe this doesn't actually make sense. Because generally speaking, if you do traffic, if, you, if, you're, if you're on a new platform, you're diversifying, and you say to yourself, this isn't working, most of the time, it's the fact that you didn't do it right. It's not the fact that it doesn't work. Right? And, and so, uh, you know, and I've seen this all the time. This has happened with me with YouTube ads, TikTok ads. Uh, um, Google ads, uh, Twitter ads, you know, you sponsorships, po a sponsoring podcast, everything I've ever done. Anytime it doesn't work, it was me, right? And most of the time it's because I didn't know anything. I didn't know the difference. And so you always have two options. You either pay somebody that has done it and has done it over and over again. And it's like just opening a book and being like, here's the playbook. Or you figure it out and it takes you an extra six to 12 months and a bunch of extra money. And I'm a, I'm a big advocate of being able to make it so that we hire people that have done it before so we can download what they know, apply it to what we're doing, and make life easier and make moment, more, more momentum inside of our business. Yes, and because we want to make life a little bit easier because, and I am a good student of yours, I put together a guide about my whole complete YouTube ad strategy and we just put it here uh, in the description and people can download it. I think that's great. And people, people need, I mean, you know, and I think, I think there's an element of like, people need to understand this stuff. And I think I can't stress how much, like if you're going to do YouTube, if you're going to do YouTube ads, generally speaking, you already have an offer that that's converting. You already have a business. You have already have some level of a funnel, right? So, so, so I don't recommend doing this. If you're like, I don't have an offer, right? I don't recommend doing this. If you're saying I've never sold anything before, right? If that's you go to a different video, right? Yeah. Find something else of mine. Find something else on the internet. But if you have something and it's working and it has a level of working, there may not be consistency. There may not be predictability. But if something's working at least at some level and you utilize this, it's going to work better. But don't use your resources to try to like figure this one out yourself. It's way easier to condense the time, get it done, figure it out. And here's the other element. And you've said this earlier. Once you figure this out, it's not something that you need to spend a bunch of time at. Right? It's something that is five, 10 minutes a day, uh, maybe not even every single day. It's something that's very easy to train someone inside of your company to be able to do it for you, right? If you're if you've scaled up. Why spend why spend $150,000 a year on an agency when you can pretty much figure it out yourself? And then if something breaks. You have the tool set and the, uh, the, the, the the skills to be able to say, no big deal. Let me take three days to figure this out. Exactly. I think it's plus, really I think it's really important to do. Plus, what I just love about YouTube ads, if you have a new idea and we entrepreneurs are always having new ideas. Yeah. <laughs> so um we can test it and we can test it with little money. I mean, if I'm having a new idea about a new product, about something I want to launch, I just make a YouTube ad and show this to my warm audience. And if yep. no one clicks, if no one is interested, I don't even do the work to build the funnel or to, to yep. do the launch. I just save yep. so much time and money. And yep. because what you're all about too is about relevancy. You really can pinpoint your relevancy. 
and you yep. can you have a platform that is really a scaling platform and with youtube i mean you can scale to the moon you will never be able i've to never i you know i've had so many i've had so many people come to me and say I can't scale my Facebook ads. You know, once I go past five thousand dollars a day, or once I go past a thousand dollars a day, the, the whole thing breaks. And 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 that makes sense. I've never had anybody come to me and say, "I I can't scale my YouTube," because there's just so much trap. There's so, I mean, you know, the amount of time that's spent is just so different, and the intention is so different. Um. So yeah, I mean, I I think that uh, I think everything works together. You know, I think that Facebook and Instagram has a place. Absolutely. I think, you know, I, I, I think like I use Twitter ads with a lot of success. I think there's a place for that, for this, for different business. Like, I think everything has a place. And I'd say that, you know, if there's like five places where you're going to diversify traffic or even three places to diversify traffic, YouTube and the Google networks always going to be on that top three, always. Okay. Um, and and it, it, to me, it's silly it's number one is silly not to diversify. Number two, it would be silly not to diversify on YouTube and the Google Mapper. And number three, it would be silly not to hire somebody at least to be able to help you on that journey. And you might as well hire somebody that uh, knows what they're doing, which in this case is, is that. But it's very important. I think that's very good that you said this. And I want to stress it again. Bring this knowledge into your business you really need to master it yourself because it's one of the most important resources you're having mastering yeah. your own marketing because if you give this away you're giving your business away it, 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 there's also just a different level of power being like okay you know you can take everything you can take everything from me everything my brand my my followers my audience you give me 10 grand and a facebook ad manager and I know I can pretty much make whatever amount of money. Again, I'm not a YouTube expert. You're the YouTube expert. I'm more, I've, I've spent my own money, about $10 million on Facebook and Instagram uh, of other people's money, hundreds of millions of dollars. I know the platform really well and I know how to print money on there. But you give me a funnel software, an email software, 10 grand and a Facebook ad manager and a weekend. And I'm, by Monday, I'm going to be printing enough money to be able to pay for my life. I guarantee you that feeling is a good feeling, yes. right? That's a good, that's a good feeling. And I have a lot of things in my life like that. You know, you give me this and that and that, and I'm good to go. Uh, now, if I sat here and said, well, you know, I know, I know I can hire an agency to be able to make that money for me. That's not very empowering. That's not very resourceful. And so I think one of the things in business we want to do the more, the more successful we are, the more resourcefulness we have, and the more things we know and understand how to do. Uh, and so I think that this is, if you're, if you're focused on scaling, if you're focused on being able to build the business to that next level, I think diversifying traffic is by far one of the most important things you can do. And diversifying where that traffic's uh, uh, um, you know, coming from and that you know how to do it, I think that's very important. Yes, I absolutely agree. Um, and I just wrote everything down. I know about YouTube ads, how I write the ads, or how I test the ads, how I just target the ads. So I just put together what Scott calls a slow lane guide. So you, there you can um, just read everything I've done in the last years to make YouTube ads work for me, for other clients. And you find the link here in the description. And thank you, Scott, so much for your time, for your trust in me. And uh, totally. let us make um, YouTube ads great for some great entrepreneurs out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think you know, there's just, there's no downside to this. The amount of cost, you know, if you if you go download the guide and, and, and you get into that, here's what's going to happen. You're going to download the guide and you're like, whoa, my eyes are glazing over. This is a lot of stuff. This is a lot of amazing stuff, right? You're going to be like, this is amazing. She obviously knows what she's talking about. Scott's behind this as well. So obviously there, there's a level of this that's working really well. And then you're going to be like, what am I doing? So you have two options whenever what am I doing comes up. The first option, which most people do, is uh, they just shut down and they're like, well, I'm, I'm just going to not do that. 
right? Because we, well, once we're comfortable, we don't want to uh, we want to we don't want to do things that are not comfortable. The smart thing, which I still do to this day, like you got to realize, I yeah, as I said, I have fifty six businesses. We're using literally twenty five different traffic sources across those different businesses. Everything from super weird to you know your traditional Facebook ads, right? And we're testing all sorts of different things. I don't need to do that. I could really just use the same three or four across the entire business. But the innovation is what creates that ability to be able to get that edge in business, to be able to scale, and to be able to build a moat around your ability to scale. Um, and so if you're going there and you're seeing all the all, all this stuff, you're going to be like overwhelmed. So if you train, if you if you take that overwhelm and you put it into action, it's useful. It's it's very useful for a business. It's really useful for being able to scale. Uh, what I see a lot of entrepreneurs do is through overwhelm or through comfort, they don't innovate, they don't diversify, they don't do the things they they know deep down that they should do until you're forced to do them. And one of the worst times to diversify is when you're forced to diversify. The worst day to diversify is the day that Facebook ads ban you. The worst day to diversify is when your, your when your Instagram account gets hacked. Your worst day to diversify is when your emails go to the spam folder. Right? You do not want to diversify when times aren't good. You want to diversify when you're kind of on that uptick. And so that's why I believe this is so important for entrepreneurs. And with that, thank you for having me here. I'm super excited. Uh, to be having more entrepreneurs utilizing YouTube, myself included, along with all the different companies that I own. Uh, and I'm really excited to have somebody that understands this stuff and knows this stuff that's a great mentor for being able to utilize YouTube, both on a strategic level, the technical level, and being able to implement it and integrate it uh, with entrepreneurs' businesses, their funnels, and the way that they actually uh, take somebody from having no idea who they are to making them an absolute fan and allowing them to say, yeah, you know what? I want your thing. So uh, excited to be on this journey with you. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to many great scripts we are writing together and get them out there. Thank you so Absolutely. much, Scott.